That's not a comic book. Now that's a comic book. Man, what a trade. Um, this I like significantly more than Birth of Venom. Um, Vengeance of Venom is... It's much more what you want when you buy something with Venom on the cover. It's all Venom stories. This is all, you know, after the the alien costume stuff and, and everything, this is all what you want with Venom, where it's just, just a bunch of Venom stories all back to back, and, and some of them connect and some of them don't, and some of them aren't very good, but some of them are. Um, I wouldn't say, actually, let me take that back a little bit. I wouldn't say that everything in here is good, but everything in here has a lot of potential. Um, if you like Venom, you you should enjoy this. Uh, even if... You good? <laughs> um, if you like Venom, you should enjoy this. So... You know, it's it's worth picking up in that respect. And it's not, like, god-awful as you read through it, which is the important part. It's it's 90s, so some of it's kind of wacky and silly. I mean, like, you know, you have all these covers and, and stuff, or, or here, even the back cover's fine. You have all these covers of Venom and Carnage attacking Spider-Man, and there's, there's no issue, at least in this, where Venom and Carnage simultaneously attack Spider-Man. Um, and Carnage is, is quite cool to see. Um... But ultimately, this is just a a really fun collection of Venom stories. It's, it's kind of like a, a, well, I'm not going to say it's Venom Greatest Stories Ever Told kind of stuff, but it's it's because it's so sequential. But it's just really like, you know, here's all the stories that Venom showed up in that are, you know, significant um, in between the alien costume stuff and, and his first couple years in, in comics. Uh... My favorite issue is by far The Trial of Venom, uh, and this is Spider-Man's Special Edition number one. Um, this I really enjoyed. Uh, this was a lot of fun, um, just because it's it's just so cool. You get a Daredevil and, and Venom book, and there's like a trial, or Daredevil and Spider-Man book, and there's like a trial related to Venom, and it's it's a lot of fun to read through. That's That's probably my favorite issue, and... It has some continuity errors with other things, like the whole argument that, uh, oh, here we go. Uh, this is, uh, Matt Murdock's, name escaped me, Matt Murdock's, uh, speech to the jury about, uh, he, he's defending Eddie Brock because the symbiote has left him. Um, and so he's saying that he shouldn't be, uh, held in, you know, held as guilty because of the stuff the alien made him do, blah, blah, blah. And, um, so Matt's speech is, although there is plenty of proof that the entity was homicidally obsessed with Spider-Man, there is no proof whatsoever that Eddie Brock was. Vault scientists have gone over every inch of my client client's epidermis. The creature is gone, and so is whatever danger he have, may have posed. The law says that for someone to be a criminal, he must have me mens rea, a state of mind in which he understands that his acts are criminal. Eddie Brock is no criminal. Venom is. Don't punish one for the sins of the other. Uh, that's really great stuff. I really like Matt Murdock's speech in this, and, and this whole case is really great. But the only problem is, earlier in the book... The Venom symbiote was detached from Eddie Brock, and Eddie Brock was in prison on his own, and... Hold on, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Earlier on, Eddie Brock was in prison on his own, and he was still, you know, preparing, and, like, he, he didn't have any kind of connection with the alien symbiote. And we clearly see that he still wants to kill Spider-Man. Um, you good? Uh, you know, he clearly want, is, is still ready to kill Spider-Man and, and is preparing himself for that. So when you get to this, you know, vengeance of or trial of Venom stuff and Matt Murdock's making all those great cases, it's a little weird that no one goes, well, what about that other time he had no connection with the entity and, and he was still ready to kill Spider-Man? Thank you. Um, well, that stuff doesn't count because 
reasons. Um, so that that kind of undercuts a little, but the issue on its own is great. Um, if, if you ignore the thing that you just read a couple pages ago, then it's re- or, or a couple chapters ago, I guess, then it's really good. Um, there's a lot of Fantastic Four stuff in here too, which is cool. Um, hmm. <laughs> trying to think the carnage stuff is okay i like venom more than i do carnage but i see what they're trying to do with carnage because with venom since he knew spider-man's identity you had to um you had to provide some kind of explanation for why he wasn't you know outing spider-man and stuff and it's because of eddie brock's whole whole notion of of what makes someone innocent and, and whether or not they're um or how you shouldn't kill innocents. And there's there's a whole thing to it. I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. Um, it's it's not the greatest thing, but they just they they clearly had a character. It's a big character trait, so I can't fault them for that. It's not a super interesting character trait, but it's it's enough. Uh, so Carnage was an attempt to make a symbiotic character in that sense. Then that could just be flat out evil and didn't know Spider Man's identity, so we could just have him be straight crazy evil. Um, so that part's cool to see, uh, and, and that part of it's fun. I just think it's just okay, though. Uh, it's, it's fun, it's, it's definitely entertaining, um, but it's just not particularly striking. I don't know, it's, it doesn't really do much for me past that. I think it's just okay. What do you think? Do you like Carnage and Venom? No. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's just alright. It's, it's not my favorite thing, though. Uh, the Carnage stuff is okay. The Venom stuff, the, the, it's, it's a lot more of what you want to be reading, though. That's the important part. Um, and you get a lot more Venom in a book with his name on the title. Um. So yeah, you get more Venom, which is what you want with the, you know, his name on the title, and and you get some interesting uh, stuff with Peter Parker too, just dealing with how to how to handle Venom. Um, so ultimately, I I enjoyed this quite a bit more than uh, than I had initially than I did Birth of Venom, just because you know the alien costume stuff's interesting. Don't get me wrong, but it took up more than two thirds of that trade. Uh, so it was disappointing that Venom was barely in it as, you know, Venom. Um, and instead, and, and we got no Eddie Brock until Venom was already a thing, which is just distracting. But this, it's all Venom. He's in every story. It's it's exactly what you want. So that, that I like about it. Um, so I just want to talk for a minute. Thank you. I want to talk for a minute about... Uh, how I think Venom could work in a movie. Um, I was tweeting about this, and uh, and it just I had some interesting thoughts on it, so I, I wanted to bring that up. Um, so, with Peter Parker, we've got a character who has always seen himself, or who's all about responsibility, right? I mean, everything with Spider-Man is all about, you know, him taking responsibility for himself, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and, and for what he's done, and, and you know, it's, it's the classic Spider-Man story. With great power comes great responsibility. And with Eddie Brock, we have a character who is completely unwilling to accept responsibility in any way, shape, or form. He's just entirely um, concerned with blaming someone else for, for his misfortunes. Like... His backstory is that he was writing about a serial killer, and then it turned out that that wasn't the real... Like, he was writing about interviews he'd done with this serial killer who was still at large, and then it turned out that that was just some kind of hoax that some guy was playing on him, and so his career was just completely in ruins, and no one would hire him after that. And he's off. Um, no one would hire him after that point, and so... And he blames Spider-Man for that because it's Spider-Man's fault that that um, you know it was the the real killer was arrested, and 
while I don't like the particular details of that story element, there is something intrinsically interesting in how you can relate it with Spider-Man there. And I'll get back to that in a sec. So, so but just of it is, Eddie Brock refuses to take responsibility for it, as opposed to him not being a good enough journalist and checking into his sources, he blames Spider-Man for capturing a criminal. Um, and that's, you know, obviously ridiculous. So you could tweak that to make it a little bit more believable. Um, but keep the element of it there, where his own problems are his own problems, but he refuses to accept it and, and just wants to blame Spider-Man or Peter Parker. Um, and then you have the, the symbiote, which is this scorned lover of a character, which refuses to, to even acknowledge the idea that it did something wrong, uh, to Spider-Man. The idea that, you know, maybe, you know, making him go out at night and beat people up and, and kind of ruining his relationships with, with family so that he could spend more time with me. Maybe that was a dick move. Uh, so you have this, this, uh, instead of acknowledging that, the symbiote's all about just, I want Spider-Man back, and if I can't have him back, then no one else can have him, he has to die, blah, blah, blah. And so that's why, you know, it, it merges with Brock, and, and I do feel creates a really strong character. I know people have their problems with Venom and stuff, and feel like he's kind of an overused or, or not a very well-realized character, and I can accept that side of things, but... I think there's, if nothing else, there's a lot of potential with um, Venom, uh, with the Brock Venom. Um, and so I think I think what you do in a movie is is you ha have Spider-Man deal with the the existence of Venom in Eddie Brock. You probably want you'd probably want the alien costume stuff to be its own movie entirely. Um, if, if anything I learned from Birth of Venom, it's that you need time for that to build, and it needs to be its own thing for a while before you introduce the Venom aspect of it, the, the scorned lover aspect. You need, you need time for that relationship to really build and go places, and, and that's one of the things Spider-Man 3 didn't do well, is, is doesn't take up enough of that movie. Like, the elements of, of the symbiote that are good are there when he, like, you know goes overboard and, and at least thinks they kill Sandman, which is great. Um, but the um, the element of, of like the time that it takes and him trusting the symbiote and the symbiote like changing him, that's that's not there enough. So you need more of that. So that you probably want to make the alien costume stuff its own movie entirely. But then when you get back to the Venom stuff, or, or when you get around to the Venom stuff, which I do feel should be its own movie where you've set Brock up in the previous film, um, we, should, we should deal with, uh, with Brock refusing to take responsibility for everything and just blaming Spider-Man, and we should build that symbiotic relationship between him and the, uh, the alien entity where, you know, Brock meeting the entity and realizing that it was scorned by Spider-Man 2, not the movie Spider-Man, T-O-O, -O, uh, realizing that it was also scorned by Spider-Man, um, couldn't build into his, his lie to himself, his, his delusion that he's somehow not responsible for his own actions. And then you can have the entity seeing that, that Spider-Man has hurt someone else, um, build into its own feelings on Spider-Man and how, you know, obviously I was with the wrong person. He's obviously just a horrible monster that, that goes around destroying lives uh, like he did with me. He just used me and threw me away and maybe you could somehow build that into Brock as well. And then once you've got all that going on and Spider-Man's able to defeat him and everything, you can have Peter Parker deal with the fact that he'd blame himself for Venom's existence and you could have Peter Parker's arc be that he can't blame himself because he's not responsible. I feel like, like you know, Peter Parker's thing is always learning to accept responsibility for himself, and that's really good stuff. That's really you know interesting, great stuff's been done with that. But at the same time, part of growing up is learning what you're not responsible for. 
Um, teenagers do two things, and one of them is never take responsibility for themselves. Make up excuses, say, oh, it's someone else's fault, it's blah, 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 it's, I didn't do this, blah, blah, blah. And that happens a lot. But they also do another thing, which is always blame themselves. Um, and so part of growing up is, of course, learning to take responsibility for the things that you did, no matter why you did them. Even if you have good reasons, if you do a bad thing, you still did a bad thing. Um, but conversely, also learning to grow, part of growing up 